Hi, welcome to the Biopharma Finder help videos. In this help video, I'm going to show you how you can edit a method for a peptide mapping experiment. We have a peptide mapping experiment shown, uh, created already. So we've named our experiment, we've loaded our raw file, and we've selected our protein sequence. Now we're going to select basic default method for peptide mapping. We're going to leave our checkbox enabled and we're going to click edit method. Now when you click edit method you'll notice the little uh, cursor will change to the spiral circle. When this is happening the software is actually reading the raw file. So depending on the size of your data files or uh, how many data files you're actually bringing into the software it could take a few um, minutes, probably not minutes, maybe seconds to read the raw files. So please be patient uh, as the software reads your data files. If you're doing this across a network it could be slow and that could be due to the speed of the network. So if you do find this process um, very time consuming you might want to consider moving your data files to your local machine. So now we're in the um, parameters page where we can uh, look at and interact with the data file in terms of our parameters for data processing. These are broken up into the component detection. We have an identification tab and then we're going to have uh, a tab that allows us to save our methods and review our parameters. So first let's start with the component detection. You can move and resize uh, the application to make sure that you can see uh, the base peak chromatogram that's displayed here and all the parameters. So in case it's not quite fitting on your screen, uh, just grab the bottom of the software and, and extend it a little bit. So here uh, we have a very nice uh, interactive uh, graphic that does show the base peak chromatogram for the first raw file. So if you're bringing in multiple raw files, it'll only be for the first one. And you can interact with this. You can zoom. To unzoom, just simply double click with your left mouse button. You can zoom in the Y axis. And you'll notice as I zoom down, you're going to see a red bar. This red bar is actually the absolute MS signal threshold. And this calculation is done, it's a product of the MS noise level times the signal to noise threshold. So it's a product of this parameter multiplied by this parameter. And you'll notice this value here is grayed out. So in order to change that value, you're going to either change this parameter or this parameter. Now, it, those of you who may have used Pet Finder, you'll notice that this is a new addition to the software. And uh, this, in order to create results similar to what you generated in your Pet Finder software, you want to set your MS signal noise level to 1000. And then you can adjust this parameter according, accordingly. So, for example, if you watch the red line as I add a number, the red line is going to move and this product will also adjust as well. And you can see that you can adjust this to an appropriate value for your data set. Again, if you want to zoom out, just double click with your left uh, button. You can zoom down in to get a better view of where it is. And you can adjust the two different parameters. I have found um, that I often set the noise level to a thousand and then I will adjust the signal to noise threshold accordingly. So the other parameters that you may want to um, use in the software is the typical peak width which this value um, usually is quite good for uh, the default value that's determined for each data set. It, it's usually quite on. Uh, you have a maximum chromatographic peak width. Sometimes you may want to widen this value if you have peptides that are really broad and a loop, you know, um, in a larger peak width than what this value is actually set to. If that is the case, let's say you have a peptide that it's eluding, um, the elution peak is, is two minutes wide and the value is set to 1.6 minutes. In that case, that two minute wide peak is not going to show up it won't be used in the component detection step. So therefore you want to keep um, keep this in the back of your mind and you can always uh, increase this value. Particularly if you're looking for disulfide bond peptides, they may be a little bit broad or if you're um, looking for the region of the antibody that contains a, the large number of prolines or if you're looking for um, 
glycosylation O-linked, they tend to be really broad as well. So just keep this in the back of your mind as you're um, looking at your parameters. You can also use restricted time range. So let's say that you're really only interested in those glycopeptides that are eluding in the first uh, between 10 and 40 minutes in your chromatogram. You know exactly where they elute. You know that this is what you really want to focus on you can um, set a restricted time window. You can say only look at 10 to 45 minutes. Now this is um, this is a very nice feature because it can speed up the process and it, you, it can allow you to add more variable modifications, it can allow you to add um, and, and it will speed up the search time. So another thing to think about when you're doing the processing. Uh, we have chromatographic, um, we have an ion alignment, so when you have multiple files it will perform ion alignment. We have some advanced parameters that we kind of um, hide now that you really don't need to adjust, so we find that um, only in very uh, special cases do you ever need to adjust these parameters. So that's the component detection. You can click up here to go to the identification, or you can click on the next button, and it will take you to the tab. Here you have your identification parameters, and this is broken up into several different sections. So we have our generic peptide identification. If you do not have MSMS data, and this is full scan only, you can check yes, and the software will adjust the parameters to allow you to better view the reports. Uh, so the um, protein coverage map and the modification summary will both be updated so that you'll be able to view results when you um, only have full scan data. Uh, if you um, have, we, we always use all the different MSMS, so if you perform an experiment where you have ETD, HCD, CID uh, in a single file, uh, the software will search all of the different modes automatically and it will provide you that identification information. Uh, you have your maximum peptide mass, we have mass accuracy, we have minimum confidence, this is a percentage maximum number of modifications per peptide. You are able to um, turn off the unspecified modification search. So now we're under advanced searches. So if you don't want to use this, just uncheck it. And you won't see all this addition of different masses. Um, the unspecified modification search will search in a, the user definable mass range and it will try to identify identified peptides plus or minus some mass value. Uh, this allows you to go very deep into your data sets. The end glycosylation, this parameter is coming from your sequence. So if you um, have assigned glycosylation and you have chosen the different host cell type uh, back when you created your sequence using the protein sequence manager, it will appear here. Now if you've forgotten to do that, you want to go back and edit your protein sequence and select your glycans. Uh, you can choose between CHO or human. If, you have a, if you'd like the software to search for amino acid substitutions, you can enable that here. If you're doing a disulfide bond search, we do have a special uh, processing method for that, or you can turn it on here if you forget. Uh, but there's, here's all the parameters for the disulfide bond. I will give a help video and talk about those specific parameters, so please see that help video as well. And here's your protease. So we have a list of um, default proteases that we have provided. If you want to do, um, we have a non-specific. So I can use non-specific if I've done, um, if I've used two proteases. For example, I used um, uh, chymotrypsin and lysine to digest my protease. And uh, you can use uh, non-specific to search that if you'd like. You can also create custom uh, proteases here where you can add it or edit one. So if I want to edit trypsin, I can edit trypsin and, and call this an example. And I could say KRF, for example. And I could add this, and now the example would show up on my list. So you can add your own custom protease as well. Let's put this back to trypsin. Okay, so now let's go next. Now we can save our method. Um, you're not able to overwrite our defaults, so you do need to name this method, and that's useful so then you know exactly what you've done. You can provide some um, notes in here. So example, you uh, here we show you all the different parameters that you set, so you can easily review this information. 
so you can see exactly what you've done in case you've forgotten or you didn't realize you said something you can also right click and export this out so you can uh, export to this to Word or you can export this to Excel so you have a copy or history of what's actually in your method so at this point if you finish and you've selected, you've named your experiment, selected a raw file, um, and you have your protein sequence, the software will automatically start to launch the experiment. If you've not done it that, if you've not um, given the experiment a name, or you don't have a raw file, it will take you back to the peptide mapping analysis page. Okay, thank you for watching our video.